Welcome back to Enjoying Retirement. Today we're going to do some snorkeling in the Florida Keys, primarily at Fort Zachary Taylor State Park in Key West. But uh, we also did some snorkeling at Sombrero Beach in Marathon, and there's a little sequence I'm going to show you at the end that uh, I think was pretty special. So we flew down to Miami, drove down to through the entire Keys, down to Key West. And then once you get to Key West, down at the southwest corners for Zachary Taylor State Park. I don't think many people know about this area because it's kind of off the uh, touristy path. But here you can see it's got a couple man-made reefs out there which set it up for snorkeling. So without further ado, let's get in the water and see what it's like. We were there on a recent afternoon, and there hadn't been any storms through the area for almost two weeks. Uh, we were kind of disappointed with the clarity of the water, and when we talked to our skipper on our fishing charter, uh, he told us that it's like this most of the way along the beach of the Florida Keys. There's just too much turbulence in the water where the bay meets the ocean. Uh, and much of the area is cloudy like that, but, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. Here's a view from the beach. They have a hut there where you can get food, you can rent snorkeling gear, uh, beach umbrellas, chairs, etc. It's actually quite a nice beach. They have plenty of trees to keep shaded in. You can have a great picnic there or you can head out on the beach itself. One thing to notice here is that the beach is mostly coral. It is not soft, white, fluffy sand. So if you want to do any walking on it, make sure you bring some sort of uh, shoes. It's not sharp rock, but it's not pleasant to walk on either. So let, let's get back in the water. I don't think many people know about uh, Fort Zachary Taylor State Park. As I said, it's uh, just a little bit off the tourist path, but Key West is not a big island, so it's not exactly far away. But it's it's got about 50 acres. It's an old Civil War fort uh, that actually has a historical area where you can go into the fort. But today we were concentrating on doing some snorkeling. It's seven dollars to get in for a car with two people. Any more than two, it's an extra 50 cents a person, so it's pretty reasonable. They have a good deal of parking. They also offer fishing off the other side of the rock. So there's no fishing where you're snorkeling, uh, but they do offer fishing and other activities there. So it's, it's quite a nice state park, uh, and it gets you away from the touristy area. As far as snorkeling goes, uh, it's clearly not Hawaii or any of the other places. The clarity just wasn't as good, although as you can see in the video, if you're up close in the right area, uh, you, you can get some good colors, you can get some good sharpness, uh, but you can't really see too far in the distance. Uh, we're, we're, I'm going to show you some video that I took uh, off the uh, charter boat we took a few days earlier and show you what the clarity looks like when you get off the coast just a bit. And from what I've heard, what I've read, um, really the best snorkeling there is if you do uh, take a charter or at least get a boat to get off, uh, off the shore about a mile into the reefs and then you get into the clarity that you would come to expect uh, from the Florida Keys. But if you don't have access to that, you just want a quick day trip, you just want to get out, do some snorkeling, and enjoy the beach, enjoy the ocean, uh, this, this isn't a bad alternative. Uh, I believe it's about 20 bucks if you want to rent your snorkel gear at the shack. That could get expensive for a family, but if you brought your own down uh, and you're going to the beach anyway, 
uh, go ahead and bring it. It's not the best, but it certainly is a good way to spend an afternoon or a few hours. Uh, the water temperature in September was fantastic, uh, and, and we enjoyed it. We didn't see the variety of fish that we've seen in other locations in the Caribbean. Uh, so, you know, that was a little bit disappointing. But still, for, for what it was, uh, it, it was enjoyable. If you're a first time snorkeler, this might be a pretty good area. You can stay on the shore side of the reef, be a little bit more protected. If you go on the other side, sometimes the uh, surf can get a little bit rougher, so just pay attention. I believe these guys are Cerro mackerel. Uh, we saw a school of them. Uh, they stayed down about eight feet of water, but uh, they were some good sized fish. Coming back up, here's a look at uh, one of the reefs. It, it's a low reef. It's not really all that big, maybe 30 yards wide. There's three of them, but, but it's enough to attract the fish. Uh, we saw this guy towards the end, nice little barracuda swimming through. But now what I want to show you is when we went fishing off Marathon, this is 25 feet of water. Kind of hard to see there, but you can see crystal clear down to the bottom. So you just have to get off the coast a little bit to get into clear water. We were doing some chumming. I stuck the camera underneath, but, you know, take a look at the clarity of the fish, the back of the boat, uh, and how far you can see here. I think that all proves that you really need to get offshore. Now here's Sombrero Beach. I was uh, snorkeling along. It was very cloudy. I wasn't expecting much. I saw a plume of dust. Decided to follow it to see what kind of fish kicked it up. At first I thought I was looking at the uh, wings of a stingray, but then I saw it was connected to a huge body. Uh, that was quite a pleasant uh, few seconds, uh, having that big guy swim right along with me. Well, that's about it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. You can make your own conclusion if that's a good enough area to go snorkeling for you. But as always, I am enjoying retirement.